Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to build a weather station so that you can check the temperature and humidity readings of a certain area. Um, you'll be able to get these readings from both your computer and your smartphone. What you're going to need to build this is one builder base. Uh, this is optional, but a 5-volt power supply DIY kit, a DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor, three male-to-female jumper wires, and two male-to-male -male jumper wires. If you're using the 5-volt DIY kit, you'll also need a 9-volt battery and a battery harness. So we'll start by assembling the circuit. We'll go with the DHT11 first, and you're gonna take your three male to female jumper wires, and we'll start from left to right on the pins. I'll quickly just give you the pin out. On the left side, it's VCC or your positive voltage. Uh, to the right of that is your data line. To the right of that is no connection. And then the furthest pin on the right is your ground connection. So we'll start by connecting power to the DHT11. Then you're gonna connect this to the 3.3 volt port on your builder base. Next, we'll connect the data line. And then we'll connect the male end of this wire to the GP0 port on the builder base. And lastly, we'll connect the ground line. This will be connected to the ground port on your builder base. Now we'll give it power. To do that, connect a wire to the ground port on the five volt power supply. Then we'll connect this to one of the ground ports on the builder base. And lastly, we'll connect a wire to the V plus terminal on the power supply. And we'll connect that, that to the five volt port on the builder base. Once you have your battery connected to the power supply, when you flip the on switch to the on position, the light on your builder base should illuminate. Now we'll go ahead and build the firmware files. So we're gonna Navigate to the firmware builder on your server. You're gonna hit the create new button. We'll call this firmware weather station. From here, you'll at, click the add hardware button. And you'll add a temperature device to the firmware. For this device, we'll select the DHT11 driver and we'll set the pin to GP0. The resolution is automatically one, and ours is in degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but you can change this if you go into the settings page of your server to read in Celsius. So now we'll go ahead and add a humidity device as well to the firmware file. And the configuration will be identical to the temperature. So now what's cool with the DHT11 temperature sensor is that it will give you both temperature and humidity readings. And both of these readings can be taken off the same data pin on the, on the DHT11. So we'll go ahead and save that. And you're gonna wanna make sure that the client that you've built this circuit on is already connected to your server before you begin the upload. So I'll go to upload and then we're selecting the weather station client. While that's uploading, we'll go ahead and build the application. So navigate open over to your applications page and hit the create new button. We'll name this one weather station as well. And then when you're on the, on the canvas, search for the temperature hardware object and for a humidity hardware object. I'm gonna go ahead and name the temperature object temperature through, via the properties panel. You're gonna to wanna to make sure once you edit this object name that you hit the save properties button 
otherwise your changes will not be saved. We're also going to name the humidity object humidity. From here, you're going to want to drag on two text interface objects to the canvas. We're going to name the first text object temperature. And then we're going to label it current temp. Now, the object name is purely for reference on the canvas. However, the label will be reflected on the dashboard. So this allows us to know which temperature, uh, which readings are for temperature and humidity. So we're going to go ahead and save these properties. And we're going to do the same for humidity or for the other text object. We'll name the object humidity and then the label will be current humidity. I'm going to go ahead and save that. And then we'll drag a node from the humidity outport on the humidity hardware object to the import on the humidity text object. We'll do the same for the temperature hardware object and the temperature text object. Our app is now complete, so we're going to go ahead and save this. Now we can navigate back to the applications page and we'll hit the run button for the weather station. Then now we have to map the hardware objects to the drivers on our client. So here we're going to click on temperature. We'll go to the client and we'll map the temperature driver from the weather station client to the temperature hardware object in our application. Do the same thing for the humidity object. Now we can go ahead and save this and run it. And we can navigate to the dashboard. And because our app is running and it has interface objects, we can see it on the dashboard. So we'll go ahead and click on the weather station. So we currently have a temperature reading. And with the DHT11, sometimes it takes a few minutes for it to gather the data for it to give an accurate reading. So to get the humidity reading, I'm going to blow on it lightly. Hopefully that'll um, spark it to, to show. And there we go. It's reading 80% humidity. Now, if you want this to read in metric units, you can go back, you can click on this admin button to return to the home page. And you can go into your settings, general settings, scroll down, and then you can see we have our measurement units here. It's currently set to imperial, but if we go ahead and click on this drop down menu, we can switch it to the metric measurement. Now we can navigate back to the home page, back to the applications page, pause the application, start it once again. We, no we don't have to go back through the mapping process because we've already mapped it before. Go ahead and hit save plus run, and we can return to the dashboard open our application and you can see it's now giving readings in Celsius. So now that that's all complete, I'll give you a brief rundown of our 3D case for this project. This just helps you keep everything contained. Um, and it makes for just a cleaner looking project. So here we have the client, the five volt power supply and the nine volt battery. Everything is wired up uh, identically to what we showed previously. However, we do have a naked client, which means that the shell has been removed. In order to do that, you go to the back of the client, unscrew this fastener, and there are two Phillips head screws on the inside that you have to unscrew in order to pluck the client out of its case. Um, the client fits in the case via friction fit as well as the five volt power supply and the nine volt battery. They all just slide right in there. While putting pr the project into this case, you're gonna wanna have the micro USB port on the client facing out towards this hole. This is so that you can power it via the micro USB and the five volt power supply. When placing the five volt power supply in this case, you're gonna wanna have the power switch pointing down. This is so that you can toggle the project on and off without having to disassemble the case. So that's it for the weather station project. It's all assembled and ready for use. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the rest of our videos. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the notification button for updates. You can also follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.